Have you ever traveled abroad or thought about visiting a foreign country? Or are you like a lot of people that knows there's something out there, but you don't have the time, you don't have the money, maybe you don't think there's the opportunity to travel abroad? Hi, I'm Jaja Palaji, and today on Global Perspectives, we're going to show you that there is opportunity here at Oregon State to travel abroad. We've got an interesting show planned for you today. Later on, we'll be speaking to two students that went on exchange programs, and we'll be looking into the study abroad program. But first, let's take a look at the International Office of Education. Here with me in the studio today is Irma Delson, who is an exchange program coordinator from the Office of Education. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Jaja. And we also have Ramesh, who is our local anthropologist and our Global Perspectives moderator. Thanks for being here, Ramesh. Thank you. All right. First off, Irma, international education is quite an uh, interesting field, exciting, I'm sure. What was it that got you interested in international education? Well, it really was the course of my life. Um, I'm a first generation American. I grew up in San Francisco, which is a very mixed cultural city. And wherever I went, I realized that was something I wanted to keep in my life somehow. And in the case of Oregon, I really wanted to be able to give opportunities to other people to understand the richness of that kind of a life. Mm. So here I am. Mm. Great. What exactly is the goal of Office of International Education? It has many different um, services that it provides, but its real objective is to try to give the campus and the community a sense of what kinds of opportunities are available for anyone who's interested in going abroad. So anybody means uh, even undergrad graduate, undergraduate students? Or? And faculty as uh -huh, well, uh -huh. and even people within the community. We have programs that give members of the community an opportunity to participate as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like that's pretty exciting. There is a lot of opportunity. What role exactly do you play in the Office of International Education? Specifically, I coordinate for the state system of higher education and for Oregon State the programs that we have with European countries, um, primarily France, Germany, and Hungary. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds interesting. Um, I heard uh, there's a forum called Global, uh, Global, uh, Global Issue Forum yes. is going on on campus. And it started a uh, few months ago, mm -hmm. and uh, you are also playing a vital role in that. Uh, could you explain what Global Issue Forum is? Uh, the idea came out of the realization that we have a very rich resource on the OSU campus. Um, the scholars who've come from all over the world to work here either for a term or for an academic year, they're here. They have a perspective that they can share with the rest of the community, and the intent was to give the campus and the community an opportunity to see vital issues in the world today, but from not a non-American perspective, to really get a sense of how the world looks from other places. So you mean uh, you bring international scholars and uh, ask them to give uh, small lectures and... Uh, yeah, every month at least once we mm -hmm. have a theme and we invite one of the scholars to present um, that topic to the campus community. Right. Yeah. And. Um, how has it gone? How's the turnout been at those? Do you see an interest at Oregon State in international affairs? I see an interest. I would like to see a broader interest. Mm. Um, we actually moved the forum from a fairly isolated location to the MU Lounge, and so we now draw people who are just walking by and seem to be attracted by what's going on there. And ideally, we would like to have a lot more people come. And Is the response uh, getting increased from the day you started to today? I think so. Mm -hmm. That's my impression. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I know that there are a lot of resources and ways to get involved with international education, but say I was just a student and I don't know anything and, you know, I want to go to China or something. Mm -hmm. As your role in the Office of International Education, how could you help me? Well, the first thing I would want to find out is whether you wanted to go to travel or to go as part of an academic program. And depending on what your 
specific interests were would find or help you find the resources that you needed in order to really start developing some serious plans mm -hmm. to go and the resources could be from the library that we have in the office could be from individuals in the office who have studied and worked with China um, or the people who coordinate the program that we do have with China right mm -hmm. so how does your office encourage uh, cultural learning and uh, international education Oh, we have many different ways. Um, the study abroad opportunities are certainly one where we give uh, a range of possibilities for students on the OSU campus to go abroad for anywhere from a term to a full academic year. Uh, there are programs where students from the OSU campus can become involved with the international students who are here on campus. We have global issues for uh, we have We try to, to reach out in as many different ways as we can. So uh, the Global Issues Farm come under one of these promotional programs, educational programs? Yes, it's our, it's our hope that people will become stimulated by what they hear and will become more curious about other cultures, other places, and will want to go. Right, uh, now, why would anybody want to know about international countries? I mean, it seems like we're so happy where we are, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps in Corvallis, in Eugene, wherever. And why should we have any interest at all in foreign countries? Well, there are a couple of reasons. Um, one, coming from a place like Oregon, I think people are very lucky and they feel very lucky to be from here, but there are a lot of people who don't know about Oregon or mm -hmm. about the states. It's an opportunity to share what they know best with other people, but the world is becoming more and more interdependent. There's a real need to understand other places, other peoples, other ways of looking at things, and ultimately to see your own culture in a different way. Mm -hmm. So it gives a different perspective and different dimension. Very much so. Mm -hmm. I think that people become a more productive contributor to their own society after they've had an opportunity to see it from a different perspective. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. So what do you see in the future of the Office of International Education? There are a lot of directions um, that we would like to pursue. One of them is to have opportunities on every continent mm. to give students a chance to really choose from a very broad range of possibilities. Uh, also to try to help the university integrate internationalism more effectively into the curriculum so that even those students who don't go abroad will have an international experience and an academic exposure to more international issues even by just staying in Corvallis. Oh gosh, mm -hmm. it sounds like you're doing a really good thing at the Office of International Education and I'm really glad that somebody's doing it because I think someday we're going to see a definite increase in, in people and their interest in international countries. I agree. All right. Well, well thanks for being it. here. Irma. Thank you. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very and much. And when we come back, we'll be taking a look at the study abroad program here at Oregon State. Welcome back to Global Perspectives, where we're talking about international education today. We're really lucky in the studio today to have Cheyenne McManus, who went on exchange to Avignon, France. And we also have Nicole Plummer. And Nicole went on a different kind of exchange program to Mexico. And we're going to find out all about that. All right. Cheyenne, mm -hmm. first of all, what was it that made you decide to go to France? Well, initially, initially to learn the French language fluently. But, to be totally honest, I kind of wanted to play French. I wanted to be like immersed in the culture, learn the language, as well as, you know, their lifestyle and their beliefs and their, you know, everything. Everything? Yeah. 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 Do you think you pretty much learned it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we'll find out more about yeah. that. Yeah. And Nicole, why did you decide to go to Mexico? Um, for the first reason, the same type of way. I wanted to become fluent in Spanish, but also I wanted to learn to have different views. I had no idea what another country was like and I thought going down their on exchange program I was able to go to school and learn the language but also learn about the country. Great. Mm -hmm. Now, did you guys have stereotypes before you went abroad about what the country would be like or what the people would be like? Naturally, you know, um, you hear that, you know, the French are very aggressive um, or that they don't like Americans or um, you hear a lot of things. So, but I had been there before so mm -hmm. I had had a taste of what they were like and actually um, 
they do like Americans. It's not like how people think. And um, they are very welcoming. They're very hospitable. You know, it's, it's hard not to have a stereotype, but... Mm. Do they have a certain attitude about them that makes them come off as kind of haughty? Mm. Well, the French are like any other country. They think, you know, they're mm -hmm. the best. But <laughs> um, I found them very natural, you know, very, um, I don't know, it's kind of... You were, you were happy? Yeah, I was happy. happy living here. <laughs> Good. Mm. Yeah. Nicole? I, when I went down there, I had a, not a lot of steel stereotypes, but, you know, a few that some people have, the typical Mexicans only that they see around here, and down there it's really not not that way. I found out that they are really open. Anybody really you meet down there is very friendly to you. There are some that are a little prejudiced, a little bit toward Americans, but it's because a lot of the, what they see is through American films mm. and such as that, as that, and they see how the Americans are in that, and so, but the majority of them aren't like that. I'm just so really interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious to know. I used to live in California, and I remember the Mexicans, you know, would whistle a lot and things like that. Is is that what it's like there in Mexico? Uh, some of them do, but not not all of them. There's you know a select few that when you're going down the street, they'll harass you, but only verbally. And mm -hmm. then there's the others, the more intelligent, you know, that mm -hmm. that realize you're, you know, they don't need to do that. And for the majority, not a lot do it, but. They do it the same way as some American guys do here to American yes. women. Did you get used to it afterwards? Yeah, you get used to it, and it doesn't bother you after that. How was that in uh, France? Exactly the same. You know, you have guys, you know, cooing and, um, you know, yelling things. But it's, it's the same here, you know. Um, the French are more romantic, I guess you could say, you know. So mm -hmm. they, they say nice things, usually, mm -hmm. um, whereas you know, in other countries, actually, I shouldn't say, but they're more um, obscene, mm. you know, so mm -hmm. I don't know. What was the program like when you went on, uh, with Americans or with natives? When? When you went on, where did you leave? Oh, I left in the summer, and yeah. I went on a, se it was a semester exchange to Mexico, mm -hmm. and I started school in August, and I, I went to school at the university down there, mm -hmm. and my classes were in Spanish with the Mexican students. Mm -hmm. And that was really interesting. You can really learn a lot through being in the classes with the Mexicans rather than just being in classes with just Americans. Mm -hmm. And so that was really interesting. Yeah. Um, now, Cheyenne would have yeah. a different uh, perspective <laughs> on that. Yeah. You, were, you were with I Americans. I was with Americans, yeah. so I didn't, um, I didn't get that, the experience that she did. Um, however, my classes were taught in French. Um, my professors were French. Um, and they also had, or they organized rendezvous with uh, the university, the French university in Avignon, so that we were able to converse with French students. So, um, it's like I said, it's not the same as what Nicole experienced, but mm. it's just as well. I think any experience going abroad is going to going to broaden yeah. your horizons, <laughs> as they say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, did you have any disappointments from the country you went to, or maybe the program you were on? Mm, I was I was actually really happy with the program because they took us on excursions, so I saw a lot. And plus, we had like a little midterm break in between. Um, like um, I was there a month, and we had a, um, a week off, in fact, where we traveled um, to anywhere we'd like. Mm -hmm. And I went to Italy and Spain. I mean, I, I was able to see a lot. So that that, like you said, broadened my horizons. I was able to see more than um, I thought I would when I was there. So mm -hmm. it was actually quite. A Good. Nice. Nicole? I really didn't have any disappointments. The only thing I would have liked to travel a little more. Mm -hmm. It's hard when you're going to school down there and you're not able to just take off and travel. We had a few breaks, but, you mm -hmm. know, not a lot. But it takes a lot of time if you really mm -hmm. want to see everything yeah. that's down or down there in, in that country or in any other country. You need Did you time. even get a chance to go down to that Mayan civilization? No, down I really there? wanted to, uh -huh. but I wasn't able to go down. I'd like to go back. How so. close you were to that part of the country? Um, it was about, I think, about a two-day trip, oh. a little more. Uh -huh. I was quite close. So there are a lot, of, a lot of places to see. A lot. So you would recommend in it a if short somebody, of time. somebody should go for kind of a long time. Or you're going to go back, aren't you? Yeah, going and for a short amount of time, I'd like to go back. Yeah, and Cheyenne, you plan to go back to you, don't Most you? Most definitely. And why is yeah. that? Because I love it there. I absolutely love it there. And um, my major is French right. as well as psychology. And um, hopefully, I would like to work internationally 
through um, an institute, which is um, Children's Institute International, and they have one in Paris, so. Oh, that would be ideal. Yeah. That would be ideal. And um, Nicole, do you plan on integrating any of your international experience into a future career? I, too, want to work with Spanish. I am um, going into elementary education, but after returning from my exchange, I decided I want to double major and get Spanish also, mm -hmm. and for a couple years at least work with interpreting or correspondence or something in an international office. Great. So you have went abroad and you have such a great experience. Mm -hmm. uh, does it change your views about the world, the way it works, the oh. way it functions? Yes, <laughs> most definitely. It's really strange because um, I s I've said this so many times that it's like opened my eyes. And when I say that, I don't mean um, like, well, I mean, I want to see everything now, even my country, and I want to travel my country. And whereas before, I was kind of like, you know, I'm happy in California, or I'm mm -hmm. happy in Oregon. Um, I want to see the East Coast, and I want to see, you know, my history now, now that I've seen parts of France, you know, the French history, so. Yeah. It yeah. makes you more aware mm -hmm. yeah. of what's going on around you exactly. and how people treat each other. So you saw a different culture altogether, mm -hmm. and you saw culture. a little bit close to the American mm -hmm. culture, even though it's really different. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a wonderful experience. Like mm -hmm. I said, it opened my eyes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people would like to get their mm -hmm. eyes opened, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they can have that kind of opportunity like you guys both did. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to really thank you both for coming. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, that's great. Cheyenne mm -hmm. and Nicole, both went on exchange. Thanks for being here. And thank you for joining us here on Global Perspectives. Join us next week when we take a look at the country of Australia.